Chapter 5, Section 5, The Spread of Hellenistic Culture. So, Hellenistic culture refers to culture where you have the mix of Egyptian, Persian, Indian, Greeks, influences all coming together. And this culture emerges post-323 BC. So what important event happened? Uh, that's after Alexander the Great's death. So Hellenic, to not get confused, is a time period about 180 years before uh, the Hellenistic period when you saw you know, the emergence of democracy in Athens. You saw the Spartans and Athenians fight in the Peloponnesian War. So that's during the Hellenic. Hellenistic is after Alexander the Great has unified all those territories in Greece and Middle East and Egypt, and he's passed away. So you know, what do we see during this period? Well, we see, first of all, the emergence of the city of Alexandria. It becomes a major commercial hub uh, due to its good access to the ocean. It also has the lighthouse of Alexandria. It also has an enormous library there with over half a million papyrus scrolls. So it becomes a center of not just commerce and um, the economy, but it also becomes a major hub for intellectual activity. We see the advance in astronomy during this period when we see, for example, major breakthrough in how we view the sun. So until then, common conception was that the sun was smaller than Greece, and they were able to figure out that, in fact, the sun was much, much, much larger than that. However, certain theories that were incorrect did prevail. For example, people back then still believed that Earth was the center of the solar system and not the sun. And this was not disproved until centuries later by guys like Copernicus, Kepler, and Galileo. Now, the director of Alexandria at the time was able to figure out, for example, the size of the Earth. And what's very impressive is when you consider back then how limited his resources was, he was able to almost figure out the exact um, size of Earth, which is about 25,000 miles in circumference. And he predicted, or he guessed, it was about 28,000 miles. In terms of mathematics and physics, you should know Euclid. He wrote the elements, which contain various proofs and equations. And his student, Archimedes, was able to accurately estimate the value of pi. And he was able to figure out that pi goes on forever. All right, 3.14159265 just keeps going and going and going. Now, in terms of the philosophy and arts, you should know Stoicism, started by Zeno, and Epicureanism. So the first of the two is Stoicism, started by Zeno, and this is the concept that common sense is an essential value, and that the highest virtue in life is based on knowledge, and that it's all about living life based on reason and understanding laws of the universe, so not being distracted by emotions and feelings. Now, Epicureanism is not quite the opposite, but a very different approach towards life. And Epicurus's philosophy was that the only thing that matters in our lives is our senses, so the, touch, the sense of touch, you know, sense of hearing, the sense of smell, and he believed that basically enhancing the pleasure of, you know, smell, touch, taste, that is what we should look for to in our lives to achieve, you know, that pleasure is the greatest good a human could achieve. Now we see during this period the Colossus of Rhodes being built, and it's one of the seven ancient wonders. And speaking of the seven ancient wonders, let's take a look at them. The seven ancient wonders includes the Great Pyramids of Giza, the Statue of Zeus, the Colossus of Rhodes that I just mentioned, the Lighthouse of Alexandria that I also mentioned just a second ago. And um, what's interesting about all of these is they've all been destroyed. Earthquakes, destructions, fires, none of them exist anymore except for one. And that is the Pyramids of Giza, almost 5,000 years and still going. Now the other exception is the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and it's a mystery uh, because in comparison to the others where there's a bit more substantial 
resources of them existing. Um, some historians question whether or not the Hanging Gardens ever existed, because this was in the middle of the desert. You know, this beautiful set of green water flowing everywhere. And this was all meant to be in what would be modern day Iraq. So historians um, disagree, you know, whether or not it existed at all. So in that sense, we're not sure if this ever existed, which is why we're not really sure whether or not it's been destroyed. Um, so that's the other exception. So they have the Pyramids of Giza that still exist, and then you have the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, which may have never existed in the first place. And that concludes all of Chapter 5. Have an excellent day, and here's the copyright disclaimer. Goodbye.